Today on Sugar Spun Run, we'll be making homemade crescent rolls. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another well-researched, carefully tested, and perfected recipe. Today we are making crescent rolls that are the perfect addition to your next holiday dinner or get together, and they are so much better than anything that you'll ever find in a tube at a grocery store. Now, this is a pretty simple recipe. We're not going to be doing any fancy laminating because it's simply not necessary, but you're still going to have buttery, flaky crescent rolls. Now to get started, you are going to need one cup of whole milk and one third cup of water. Now I'm going to combine these in the larger measuring cup and this is heat proof, so I'm going to take it over to the microwave and heat it in about 20 second intervals until it's between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Anytime you're heating liquid in the microwave, you always wanna give it a nice little stir before taking the temperature because it can have hot pockets of liquid in there. All right, this is right in our temperature range. So I'm going to add this to a large mixing bowl and I'm also going to be adding two and a fourth teaspoons of active dry yeast. Now to help that yeast activate a little bit quicker, I'm going to add just a pinch of my sugar and I'll stir everything together. We'll let this sit until the yeast is nice and foamy. Generally, this takes about five to 10 minutes for me. If your yeast does not activate and get that foamy cap on top, you're going to have to start over. All right, this is beautiful. So we're going to add one fourth cup of granulated sugar. I have six tablespoons of mostly melted unsalted butter. You can see I have a couple butter pieces in there, but those will absorb nicely into the mixture. You also don't want this butter to be too hot, so it's kind of nice that I can tell this isn't overheated. We're also going to be adding one large egg plus one large egg yolk. You can discard that extra white or save it for something else. I like to use the extra yolk because it helps to really enrich the dough. It makes it nice and soft and tender. Now I always lightly scramble this with a fork before adding it into my batter. Add two teaspoons of table salt. And here I have five cups of all-purpose flour measured out. Now, I'm not going to necessarily use all of this, and for now, I'm just going to add about half of that in with my other ingredients. And I'm just gonna use a spatula to stir everything together until it's really well combined. Now, once I have all of that flour combined, I'm going to gradually add additional flour until the dough is a nice consistency. And what I mean by that is I want the dough to be clinging to itself and pulling away from the sides of the bowl. Just continue to add additional flour as needed until you reach that consistency. Now here we are pretty close. I don't think I need to add any more flour yet. The dough's clinging to itself. Um, I'm struggling to get all of the flour absorbed. It'll get there, but it's not a really wet batter at this point. So I think I'm ready to transfer this to a clean surface and begin to knead it. Now, if you're using a stand mixer, you would just use your dough hook to knead for about three to five minutes. Today, I'm going to be transferring this to a clean, lightly floured surface. And as I need, I'm going to need to add additional flour. Feel free to add as much as you need, but you don't wanna overdo it. Now I've added a little bit of flour to the surface. I've added flour on top of the dough, and right now it's still sticking to the counter a good bit, so I'm going to add more flour. You may need to use more than the five cups we originally allotted. That's totally fine. So here the dough is no longer really sticking to the counter. It's not really sticking to my hands. I'm just going to continue to knead until it's smooth and elastic. And this is going to take about five minutes. All right, you can see we have this beautiful smooth ball of dough right now. So I'm going to grab a large mixing bowl. We'll lightly oil this with just a little olive oil. And place your dough in here and we'll turn it so all surfaces of the dough are covered with a thin layer of oil. Cover this tightly with plastic wrap and we'll place this in a warm, draft-free place to rise until it's doubled in size. For me, this usually takes one to two hours. Once your dough is big and beautiful like mine is, we can go ahead and gently deflate this and transfer it to a clean surface. Now, I'm going to divide this dough into three even pieces. So let me just kind of form it into a rectangle. That way I can easily divide it. And we're just going to work with one third at a time and roll it into a circle. Now your circle should be about 12 inches in diameter and I'm gonna try my best, but I'm notoriously bad at rolling circles, so don't laugh at me. Honestly, this isn't my worst work. So once you have your nice round circle, we're going to cut this into eight even wedges. Now I'm just going to use a pizza cutter because that's the easiest way to do it. Oh, 
Okay, so now we just have to make our crescents. Now to do this, we're just going to grab the larger edges of our wedges, and I like to pull them tight a little bit, and we'll just roll it into a nice little roll. All right, now just use your hand to form this into a crescent shape. Just fold it a little bit, and we'll place these on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Give the crescent rolls a little bit of room because they are going to rise a bit before we put them in the oven. Once you've made all eight of these, of course, we'll move on to our next portion of dough and we'll continue to make crescent rolls until we've used up all of our dough. Now, when you place these on your baking sheet, you wanna make sure that the point of the crescent roll is facing down, otherwise it's going to pop up as it bakes. Okay, so I wanna let these rise again for about another 30 minutes. I'm just going to cover them with a clean kitchen towel and let them sit in a warm draft-free place again for at least 30 minutes. While the rolls are resting, you can preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. After the time has passed, you can see they've puffed up a little bit. So I'm going to make a nice little egg wash. This is optional, but it's going to make those rolls turn a beautiful golden brown color on the outside. Now, I'm just using an egg wash, which I'm making by whisking together one egg and just a small splash of water. Try not to laugh at my brush. The handle broke right before I started filming. Look, you can see that on this one, I didn't tuck that tip under quite well enough, not as well as I should have. So when it's finished baking, that edge is going to pop up. Not the end of the world, just something to look out for. All right, we'll pop these in the oven for about 18 minutes. And these are beautiful. You can see on the ones where I didn't tuck the tips properly, they've popped up a little bit. That's fine, they're still going to taste delicious. And that is how you make picture perfect crescent rolls. Perfect for any time, honestly. Weren't they easy? I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. And if you try it out, please let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. So good.